Uh, ten years ago, I created a search engine, a distributed search engine. It's called, called uh, Yassi.net. And I'm not talking about this today. I'm talking about a new thing. And it's a little bit a uh, political thing. And it's a uh, philosophy. And it's a lot of fun with a new toolbox you can use to uh, get a lot of data. Therefore, the second title for this is Download Your Data. But what does it mean you know, why your data? I like to scare my audience with the first slide a bit. So here it is. It's called um, the World Government. It's from the German uh, news magazine uh, from last month. And you uh, probably know these guys. And uh, I think some of them shouldn't be there. And some of them should be there, but there are no names, so there are no pictures to show. Um, these companies uh, can be called metocrats. There's a web page. This is an idea uh, 15 years ago where they uh, uh, thought that they will be exist. And there's a philosopher, uh, Alexander Barth, which makes nice talks about it. I recommend it very much. It's essentially about uh, removing broadcasting from the community so people can talk to each other. They have social platforms. Uh, then broadcast is not necessary anymore and governments don't have so much power of the people so the power comes from the people themselves uh, and it's steered by the metocrats but um, the government uh, are considering that uh, this is dangerous and they are going to take over this and uh, there's the prison project uh, which we all know so um, from the open source open data perspective we should create some uh, open alternatives because without uh, open source there is no uh, free speech, from my opinion. So the alternatives which, which came out in the last time for Facebook or LinkedIn is uh, something like Diaspora and Fanica. I don't know anything for Instagram or similar. And for Twitter there was Identica. But all these project, projects came down in some way and they hadn't been so successful. And the question is why, why is, is it not possible that the market can decide, that the market can say there is something better. I believe it's because of the, the amount of data which is there in these platforms. And the more data is there, the better the platform uh, gets and the more attractive they get. So uh, these alternatives, free alternatives, don't have a chance to catch up. There's one exception, there's one free, uh, free software project which is really nice and this is OpenStreetMap. From my opinion, OpenStreetMap is the best map you can get and they have the best data. So uh, this is uh, an example where uh, free software succeeded with uh, free data. And uh, I thought, uh, how, can we, how can we catch up with the problem? And um, one solution is to scrape data or to take data from one of these social communities platforms and in this example, Twitter. Twitter has an uh, API, but you need an authorization to get data from there. And then you get JSON, but uh, only a limited amount. And this interface was created three years ago. There was a blog posting called Following Up on API Housekeeping, which announced uh, essentially that now the open APIs are closed and you have an, uh, need to have an author authorization. So if you want to get data without authorization from Twitter, you need to create a scraper which takes the data from their HTML pages. And this is the same as I did 10 years uh, now from now with uh, search engine technology. We take data from web pages and it's the same thing we can do with Twitter as well and scrape down uh, millions of tweets. So um, let's try this. Other people tried this as well and uh, uh, the service came down. The tagger was a, a Twitter search engine and I said, unfortunately, our Twitter data supply has become unreliable over the past few months. So they, uh, the service is dead. And there's another a search uh, portal for Twitter called Topsy, which is really nice. It's, it works really well. It's a, it's a closed platform and it was acquired by Apple. So they have enough money to pay for the tweets they want to get. And that's not something we want to do. We want to free the data and get it from them. Um, maybe if the data is free, it could look like this. Um, if you know Kibana, it um, can do um, a mass analysis, or, um, uh, an analysis of mass data. And this is an analysis example of tweets about Force Asia some days ago. And if you have enough data, we can do this. So let's get enough data. 
The question is how many tweets are there, and in the past 2010, 50 million tweets had been there every day, then uh, next year 200 billion, 340 million, and 500 million two years ago, and the appro approximation is that they are growing now by 30% every year, <laughs> so we can guess it's at least 800 million tweets every day, maybe 1 billion. So this is the amount of tweets, and the question is can we get them all? <laughs> Can we get so much uh, data? And uh, before we start this, we need, need to know how a search engine uh, works in the in the basic parts. And you always have a content harvester, you have a search index, and a search front end. And what we try to do is to create only this thing, and the search portal can then be done by everybody else because the data is available on an open API. Uh, and that's in a project I called uh, Locklack, and. Uh, right side, you do this. So what we used is an Elasticsearch index and as the content harvester there is, there is a Twitter scraper but there can be more scrapers. You can put on your own scrapers or APIs to take uh, messages from other services as well. And as a front end you can instantly use Kibana. You don't need to do this, you can take something else. But this is just an example. And what we also do is to dump all the tweets we get from Twitter on a, on a JSON text dump and we add a peer-to-peer -peer interface so that all these installations uh, of Twitter scrapers can communicate uh, with each other and exchange their data. And uh, the, the JSON dump becomes a very large collection of archived tweets you can create. So that happens if you search on, a, on the interface there. There's a search portal making a search request, and the request is uh, transported to three targets. One is the internal search index, one is the Twitter scraper, and one is the so-called back-end, another log -like peer. You can set up which peer is that is, so you can create your own network. And if the result is computed, the uh, new tweets are stored in the JSON list, and as a third process, the new JSON um, uh, texts are transmitted to the backend peer. So uh, all the new information you collected is uh, is uh, spread through the network you set up. And um, there's a, this is a small calculation from a dump I already created, and uh, you see from the from the uh, uh, count lines here, uh, what came out is uh, you need for a compressed message with all the JSON data and metadata only 106 bytes. It's, this is compressed. And if you count this uh, high to about 1 million uh, messages, you need 128 gigabyte. And if you uh, calculate this for one month, then you need only a 4 terabyte disk to uh, collect all tweets <laughs> of one month. So. Um, this is a kind of small feasibility study. I don't expect that we uh, collect uh, actually so many tweets, but uh, it looks like it, it's possible. So a four terabyte disk is sufficient to archive all 30 billion tweets a month from Twitter using Locklock. And Locklock is the, the portal uh, which is already up. The software exists, you can download it. It's uh, uh, LGPL licensed, and I want to show it now. So this is the live web page from locklock.org. Locklock is a spicy Cambodian dish, a, a, a meat dish, and uh, you can say that the, uh, if, if there's data in it, then you have meat into your application. <laughs> so this is the idea to name it like this. And if you uh, search for FOSS Asia, for example, then um, that's that's what you get. It's uh, JSON. It's not very clear now here, but you get uh, you get all the, the hashtags extracted, and uh, there's also a deshortener for the for all the shortened links. It's very easy to deshorten links, and this is done from Locklock itself. So you get clear data and a lot of statistic, and it's and it's uh, formulated in such a way that Kibana is able to extract uh, entities from it very easily. So um, what, uh, what's inside this web page as well? So there's a nice about page which describes the technology itself, the same slides as I have shown you here. The network is a bit slow.
What does it do? <laughs> Time short, and uh, I don't know what happened with the network here. You can try this for yourself. Go to locklock.org, and they, uh, I wanted to show you the the API. Uh, this is, for example, a status API, and there's a crawler as well. The crawler is able to match, uh, to fetch mass data from from uh, uh, Twitter by giving one search term. Then, uh, in the result, the crawler looks for all the terms which appear as hashtags and names, and then feeds it again to the crawler, and it uh, creates large lists of terms, and downloading the, the search results from this. So you can instantly create 100,000 uh, tweets in some hours in your own index. So um, this is this is almost it. I don't know why the why the internet connection is now not working. <coughs> and um, would be. So nice. Oh, here it comes up. It's still only slow. Yeah, it, it says how to download uh, and install the application. It's done in one minute. minute. Uh, you need uh, a Git, a JDK, and 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 then you have it up and running in one minute. And there is uh, there's this uh, dump directory, and that's the place where all the uh, the JSON. The dumps are in a text file, so you can download from every peer. You can download the, all the, the scraped um, tweets from this JSON data. So we did it. Tweet search with JSON API, not like Twitter scraper. Um, to sum it up, you can collect, dump, and index tweet search results with Rocklack. Uh, it's kind of anonymous because it uh, it's a portal which can anonymize, anonymize your requests and you don't need an uh, authorization from Twitter to get their tweets. And uh, there's also a kind of uh, anonymity because the uh, D-shortener inside uh, removes the access to all the shortener services so they also don't know that you are on their pages. And it's, uh, it's a peer-to-peer -peer software, you can set up a peer-to-peer network, it's a distributed peer-to-peer -peer scraper with Kibana front-end. And um, that's the end of the presentation and it explains why download your data means it's your data you can download. You can download all your own tweets, you can uh, even uh, uh, modify ex uh, downloaded dump files by just doing a grab over a term and it gives you a new dump list, which you can easily import in Loglock by just throwing it into a handover directory. Um, one thing I forgot to show is this Kibana page, uh, which shows the, the most recent tweets here in the statistic, and you have navigation systems here, and can show the, the uh, most common hashtags used in combination with the search term uh, for Asia and so on. So I hope you like it, uh, you use it for, for your own purpose, to analyze tweets, statistical data, and uh, please uh, uh, send me your comments using Twitter, or, uh, show me the applications you did, and I will happily link all the applications you create with the Twitter scraper yourself on the Locklock homepage. Thank you. Thank you.